occurred for years and years. A birth story. All of us have a birth story. Mine is that of a firstborn and a 24-hour labor. Frustration building in my mother as she watched moms come and go with their new infants while she waited and endured. Ed was born right around Thanksgiving, and I've heard the story about a pumpkin pie being delivered to the hospital for a hungry new mom. Our stories as a family include birth mothers and late night phone calls from the hospital and surprising our church families with new arrivals. Our stories give insights into our lives and knit our families together with each retelling. Most of our tales don't hold the glamour and wonder of the big screen of the epic, but I like to think that some of my tales might play late night on Hallmark Channel, but not a blockbuster. And even the details of the biblical narrative taken on their own don't make an epic either. They are actually mundane. Shepherds watching their sheep at night. A young couple from out of town can't find a place to stay and end up roughing it in a shelter designed for animals. A messenger keeps stopping by with strange news. A guy had a dream. There is a pregnancy scandal, but there's no fight or no breakup, only a desire to do the right thing, and then obedient acceptance. None of these tiresome events are earth-shaking, or compared to some of the ideas Kelly the screenwriter came up with. But taken as a whole, with all the little parts of the story working together, with the background of prophecy, and our knowledge of the resurrection. Oh yeah, definitely epic. So let's give you that acronym today out of that new popular word, epic. So when you hear it floating around in pop culture, you may find spiritual meaning. So let's spell it out. E for everyone, for all people. It's the good news we all need. You don't find good news on the television or the Twitter feed much. With the last update of my iPhone, it's now sending out notifications from CNN, and I'm still deciding if I'm going to turn it off or not. In the months since that upload, I don't recall any good news appearing. I get the news of war and battle and plane crashes and shootings, politics and natural disasters. It's exhausting and disheartening. We, all of us, need good news. The good news of great joy is for all the people. Jesus' ministry continued, taking the message to all people as he ministered to leaders and lepers, to the poor and the sick. He tells Peter and us to feed my lambs, to feed my sheep. Jesus uses the symbol of the shepherd to describe himself. And we find those very laborers present in the birth story. They are humble and hardworking. One doesn't choose to be in the field at night unless it's necessary. So when approached by a messenger, of course they're afraid. They're guarding against all sorts of predators and thieves. But the message and what they see and feel are enough for them to leave their posts and seek the child out. Yes, the shepherds give us the assurance that the good news is for everyone. P is for promise. The Judeans had been waiting and watching for the Messiah with the promise that he would come. We read that passage in Isaiah today. promised one would come, and Joseph understood that. Besides those humble shepherds, I admired Joseph a great deal. For one thing, Joseph's lineage validates the prophecy of a firstborn son in the house of David. But there's more to him than his bloodline. Joseph was an ordinary Joe, 
called by an extraordinary God to protect the weak and the vulnerable. He was called to bravely step in despite damage to honor and reputation. I marvel at his response to care for Mary and the baby when most men in his culture would walk away from the insult. Joseph kept his promise. He was called to a, a terrible difficult thing that would change his life and that of his family forever. The ridicule may have been difficult to face, but he acted faithfully and responded to God's call to be the earthly father to a child he could hardly comprehend. A child his people had longed for for centuries. The story held even more promise when Joseph stepped in to take his place with Mary and Jesus, protecting them in an unset, uncertain political climate. And God fulfilled his promise to send the Messiah. To the eye I give incarnation. The miracle of God come to earth to live among us. When the Hebrew people imagined the Messiah coming to rescue them, they dreamed of strength and military might to go up against the strong Romans. They dreamed of triumph over the prevailing political system, over the oppression. They did not imagine that God had a different way in mind for them. They did not know that God's heart would guide them to care for the weak, to turn the other cheek, to argue with the brains and not brawn. It took the incarnation of Jesus, God in flesh, to demonstrate what God meant by Messiah, Emmanuel, Savior. In Molly T. Marshall's book, Joining the Dance, she describes how incarnation continues. That the Spirit dwelling in us makes us living, breathing incarnations of God. As the third part of the Trinity joins with us, we are brought into that holy communion, that holy dance, and we live out Jesus' incarnation. Christ, God with us. For the sea of epic. Christ, God with us, teacher, healer, savior. Christ, the son of man, and nowhere to lay his head. Christ, worker of miracles, feeds the hungry, heals the sick. Christ, teacher about money and how to treat our fellow man. Christ, who spent his time among the people, among everyone, but who remembered to withdraw and spend time with God. Christ, who did what was necessary to prove unconditional love to us. Christ, who is risen, having broken the chains of death, that we might join with him in eternal life. Christ, the vulnerable child, quietly birthed into this world in the most humble of circumstances. Christ, And you, my friends, are living out Epic, the sequel. Learn from the ancient story. Be accepting of your call as Mary and Joseph were. Work hard and be humble as the shepherds. Sing praises to God and be messengers of good news like the angels. Bring gifts to God like the wise men. Be an incarnation of Jesus and shine God's light into the darkness because Christ is epic.